Hey YouTube, Coppersan here. Today we're leveling MapleStory's newest class, Kane, to level 200. Kane will swing by soon in MapleStory C on the 9th of June and the MapleStory Global on the 23rd of June. This video will also contain spoilers for the Kane story. Skip past the tutorial bit of this video to skip those, you have been warned. And finally, before we begin, this entire video was captured in the test server, so some things still might change or be fixed. Keep that in mind as well, please. So about this Kane guy. Kane is an archer with a unique type of crossbow. His main stat is dex, and like most new classes, Kane starts in his own star area in Grandis. Kane is part of the Nova race, even though he has no horns or wings. He's actually part of a race that worshipped a demon dragon that gave them control over this power called Malice, which will be explained a bit later in the video. Kane is actually part of a hitman organization, but not by choice. You see, he lost his memories and he's planning to stay here for exactly one year before continuing to search for his memories. He gets regular checkups by a character called The Doctor to see if any of his memories are returning. Kane isn't a bad guy though. For example, instead of killing some innocent children, he hides them in his locker with the intention of helping them escape later. Eventually, and later in the story, through a strange dark crystal, his memories come flooding back. And we learn that the Doctor character can actually remove memories. So we figure out that Kane has actually been already with the organization for six years. And every year, everyone's memories get reset and the cycle repeats. In the end, due to Kane and everyone else getting their memories back, they start a coup against their boss. However, in a tragic twist of fate, we learn that the boss is actually Kane's sister. And she was forced to work inside the organization as well by this Dr. Evil guy. After a confrontation though, she dies, but is later revived by Dr. Evil, who cannot apparently only take memories away, but also death itself. It seems kind of OP. Anyway, this intro takes at least an hour with cutscenes and a lot of dialogue, so prepare some popcorn or grab your favorite Netflix show or anime if you are creating Kane. So that was most of the beginning story, but now that we're finally free, we can start training. So let's go over his skills. Kane is actually really fun to play, and that's all because of his first job skill, Grappling Wire. Kane can fire this grappling wire to a platform above him, latching onto the platform, cast it again to be pulled towards the platform. This gives Kane a Spider-Man-like playstyle, where you're swinging from platform to platform and it's really fun. It's like Kadena's hook, but better and easier to use. You can hang from the hook for a second as well and attack while flying towards the platform. Pressing the skill again while you're already flying towards the platform will cancel the skill. Kane's main attack skill in first job was Strike Arrow. It doesn't have super high skill damage percentage yet, but this skill will get plenty of buffs along the way. It has decent range and hits 4 times, so you should have no trouble leveling up. This character though has no legion and only 4 link skills, so we aren't super buffed or anything like that. This is just uh, pretty standard Kane damage I'd say. Kane's legion increases dex by the way, and his link skill is a passive that builds up stacks every 8 enemies defeated or 5 attacks that hit a boss monster. Once you hit 5 stacks at max link skill level 2, your damage increases by 17% for 20 seconds. This effect has a 40 second cooldown. Kane plays and feels a lot like a mixture of an archer and thief class. His dash skill Shadow Step only confirms this, dashing in one direction and making him stealthed, aka dark sided, which just means he cannot be hit by most things. You can use this skill again to stop riding your tracks if you're dashing towards something. Your enemies will never see you coming. He has a double jump and a passive skill called Assassin that increases his attack power, critical rate, gives 50% knockback resistance, more HP and defense and decreases damage taken all passively. When Kane is released, there will be a growth support event active as well containing a lot of goodies. At level 30, you'll get a 30 day last six deal which will happily loot items for you in exchange for some pet food. Maple C slightly tweaked this event, they're giving out a free 90 day pet instead for example. You'll also get a free level 30 gear and 3 inventory expansion coupons. Your rewards are at level 100, 150 and 200 and we'll go over those once we reach those levels. In second job, you get your gauge. Yep, Kane is another gauge class. However, it is not exactly something to stress over which is pretty nice. Kane uses a resource called Malice. Once he fills up his gauge, he can stack a store of Malice, or Malice Stone, or whatever they call it. In his second job, we can serve the two of those and one full meter. Then using the skill Possession, grants you an active buff that enhances one of your attacks. Only one though, so you have to keep using it if you want to keep enhancing your attacks. All of your red colored attacks have a possession state, which is basically the same attack with a somewhat different animation or additional effect. It increases his damage and also his effectiveness. For example, this is what the Strike Arrow skill looks like when possession is used. 
Speaking of Strike Arrow though, in second job Kane gets a new skill called Strike Arrow 2, which activates automatically after using your first job skill Strike Arrow. This is a skill that you can spam as your other attacks will have charges. Your second job skill Scattering Shot fires arrows with a crazy big attack range, usually hitting multiple platforms. This skill has 3 charges and it takes 6 seconds to recover one charge. If you use Possession and then use this skill, the enhancement makes the arrows target the monster with the highest HP instead, but if one enemy is hit by multiple arrows at the same time, the damage is reduced. By the way, if you are using a Possession skill, usually those Possession skills have a separate cooldown as well, usually around 10 seconds, except for Strike Arrow. Kane is a class that requires a lot of button pressing. You're constantly swinging around from platform to platform, attacking and applying possession. It all feels pretty natural though, and the flow of attacks is nice. It doesn't hurt your fingers like playing Blaster, but let's be real, nothing really hurts like playing Blaster. And finally, Kane also gets a toggle on off skill called Dragon Fang. This skill summons those little balls that attack enemies. They activate after attacking a couple of times, and up to three of them can be active at the same time. Technically, Kane could train anywhere thanks to his grappling hook. Actually, it felt a bit weird to train in smaller maps where he can't use his grappling hook that efficiently because you just want to move around constantly. In third job, we're getting the final strike arrow upgrade with an additional attack that procs when using the skill three times. We get the passive skill grinding, which gives us a ton of passive bonuses, and we learn the skill shaft break. Grind for too long and your shaft will break, I guess. What are those skill names? Shaft break is pretty awesome though. It creates an explosion that sucks in monsters, so you enjoy your Vex skill. The skill has three charges and can be enhanced by the possession as well. And again, after using possession, this skill will have a cooldown. You can still use the charges, but the enhanced possession effect will have a cooldown. In third job, Kane is really shaping up. You can really start to see his playstyle. While most of his skills so far are medium to long range, he has an interesting way of bossing. Thanks to the passive skill Death's Blessing, when you apply possession to your attacks, monsters will now get a stack that times X counter above their head. Using an Execute skill, which are these purple skills, it will pop that stack, dealing a ton of damage and it grants a short buff. In third job, you'll be learning two Execute skills, Phantom Blade, which can be spammed, and Tearing Knife, which has a 4.5 second cooldown. Also, if you defeat enemies with this skill, you'll reset the cooldown of Shadow Stab, your dash, which is great because most Execute skills are rather small to medium range, so you have to get close and personal with monsters to execute them. Now, this test server is based on the regular server, but I'm actually wondering if Kane will have a decent time grinding off the third job and reboot, because his Execute skill deals so much damage, it could be quite useful when fighting those high HP monsters and reboot. Anyway, and finally, Kane also gets another toggle on off skill that pops out an additional attack when he uses his possessed skill or when he activates that's domain. And on a passive skill that increases his final damage, attack power, critical rate, enemy defense ignored and bolsters his elemental resistances. Now it actually sounds like Kane has a lot of skills, but so far it isn't actually that bad. You can use strike arrow just by spamming that and it will use all three forms and with just one button. There are two toggle on off skills, there's one buff, your booster, and two other attacks, one empowerment buff, your possession, and two execute skills. Even though we don't have any Legion and only 4 Link skills, Kane is more than fine training in higher level areas. Just keep in mind that there is a change to the monster EXP with the new update. Monsters that are around your level will give you a small boost in EXP. At level 90, we grab our EXP buffs and go fight Zakum. Use your dash here to stay out of Zakum's hands. At level 100, your Kane will get another gift, a Lost Memories title and a legendary cryptic chest. This title gives 30 star force, 10 all stats and attack and 500 max HP and MP. The cryptic chest contains a frozen weapon, secondary weapon, cape, overall and hat, as well as a few mastery book boxes. So we're for a job now, so let's keep training. We unlock two more slots for our possession gauge, so now we can have four of those stacks. Kane also gets a passive upgrade that makes him recover HP every 50 monsters defeated or when he materializes that blessing on a boss. His new attack, Falling Dust, is pretty cool as well. It reminds me a bit of an attack that the Jet class has. This attack can be enhanced by possession as well to create a big skill shot. Great for grinding, actually. Kane really has great bossing and grinding, like plenty of lines. He isn't as strong as the Adele class though when she was released, but he definitely ain't half bad. And he also gets a 3.5 second invincibility frame, which is actually amazing for bossing. There are two more execute skills and four job, both with relatively short cooldowns and you can use those to proc your stacks. So when it comes to bossing, Kane is a bit more work. You want to build up as many stacks as possible on bosses, using possession to empower your attacks and popping those stacks with your execute skills. So not only do you have the boss mechanics to worry about, but your gauge, cooldowns and execution skills as well. Plus you have to get up close to proc your stacks, so use your dash wisely. At level 150 we get another gift, which is a fully upgraded Fafnir set that is time limited, but it's great to get your character going. 
With training and all the regular spots that we usually train in at the regular server, I will redo this video later this month as well when Kane is released for the official servers. I'm actually really curious how much difference having Legion and Link skills will make. If you're looking for training spots, we recently released an up-to-date training guide which should appear as a card right about now. Alright, so time for the hyper skills. There is Chasing Shot, which is a 30 second cooldown attack that bounces around, dealing damage, it's pretty neat. Your level 160 hyper skill has two components. Unseen Sniper is a key down skill that can be used to every 40 seconds. However, you can also use the Possession skill, and this skill will change into a long range execute skill. The level 190 skill is called Incarnation, which increases your damage and attack power and gives another 50% knockback resistance for 40 seconds. It also increases the lines on that's blessing. Plus this skill gives the ability to have your nearby party members proc those dead blessing stacks as well. It's pretty nutty actually to get some additional party burst. Normally we train to level 200, but since we actually have a level 300 cane in the test server, let's jump over to that character for the 5th job skills and the level 200 reward. You'll get an awesome title that is unfortunately time limited. A cash hat that looks amazing and this box with the cash hat equipment can be traded within your account before you open it. You also get the Satira's treasure chest that contains EXP cards, arcane symbols, notes stones and a within your account tradable totem that it can be used to boost the spawn rate. This box can be opened a total of 8 times at the start of every week. For his 5th job skills, Kane has a combo going on which is amazing. The Dragon Burst skill fires a massive laser that will apply up to 15 stacks. It can also be changed the direction in case some bosses like to teleport around. With all those stacks applied, you can use your other 5th job skill, Fatal Blitz, to pop 14 of those stacks for an insane amount of burst. Anytime you'll see a boss melting, it's because of this skill. Kane has such amazing 5th job skills. The skill Tenatal's Descent is a buff that increases your damage, again increases your knockback resistance and creates those arrows that pop out while attacking. You can also use this skill to activate a massive screen engulfing attack that deals an incredible amount of damage and you're invincible during the attack as well. Your final 5th job skill passively harvests death throws that can then be consumed to use Grip of Agony. The more throws you have, the longer the skill lasts. It looks a bit like a shield, but it's a place down skill that actually just deals damage. And that was Kane. So far I'm really enjoying this class. Am I gonna main it? Probably not because it's a lot of work to play this guy. But overall he's really fun. Are you excited for the Kane class? Let me know in the comments. And that was all we had to show for today. As always, many thanks to our members for making this video possible. Thanks to Niels de Comic, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, FLX, Ralias, Terry Kim, Jiju, Vuris, Riser Ryu, Dries Sumker, Plux, Wiley, Francisco Sousa, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, CMAX, Safronex, Lonzo BG Extremes, Anwar NHI, Brandon, Frank Bouguet, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, BMWT, Knife Zoo, Chen125, Pinky Traveler, Cloudfix, Gasuza Rodriguez, Sir QQ Mors, Gummy Bones, Sir Tito655, Grayson Lee, and Venetia. If you would like to mention here as well and get early access to new videos, make sure to check out that join button below this video. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and happy mapling!